<laughs> All right, hello everybody, it's me, Clonk, and we're playing Symptoms of Deceit, a Yandere visual novel. Some, you know, this game is a work in progress. There is a lot of content warnings. Pause it, read it, whatever, okay? This is an 18 plus game, okay? I'm gonna try to censor it if something pops up. I didn't look, okay, at the description. I just saw this under a Yandere game game jam so that's why we're playing it okay what's her name we're gonna we're gonna be like clock we're just clock uh we're gonna be a he him what happened when you were younger choose the most impactful to you i went to <laughs> oh my god i went to summer camp <sighs> fucking summer camp um i stayed in a hospital for a week i got lost in a large mall i went to an aquarium i just went to school <laughs> these are all really mild these are all really this is like rich kid shit what the hell like went to, went to the aquarium <laughs> this is like rich kid stuff all right um <laughs> i did get lost in a mall once select the color for your text box messages and some ui elements a lot worse stuff happened to me as a kid i could have picked it <laughs> uh, we won't get into that okay um some UI elements. You know, I'm loving the colors. I'm loving I'm liking this. Start game with the Yandere women love interests. Start game with the Yandere men love interests. What? What does that mean, Chan? <laughs> Why not both? Men? Men. Man. Okay. Alright, I think it's men. Okay, uh, do I have sound on for this? Just no music. Okay, we're silent. We're going full silent, Boros. You just get to hear my voice. That's a lot of zeros on my PC. Lava lamp? I'm based? You never know what to do with the last few minutes of your shift. It's too early to clock out, but too late to start on anything else. Guess I should look around to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I love the cursor, by the way. That's great. <laughs> I let chat decide for me. Wait, I'm... Nalus won a similar one. He said he was going to put it in his room. The lava lamp? It's the lava lamp I won at the arcade last weekend. Oh my god. Am I done looking around? Keep looking around. What's going on? It's not time for me to leave yet. Always important to stay hydrated. What's my favorite drink? It's Baja Blast, bitches. <laughs> Only on special occasions, okay? Uh, gamer. Game. Gamer mode. Please, gamer. Okay, I think I have to leave. I think my job is forcing me to leave. Am I done looking around? Yeah, let's check our phone. Pick up your phone. No new messages. I guess I'll check Coral Connect. You died. Wow. This was posted at 3 a.m. this morning. Tremo always stays up too late playing games. She really needs to fix her sleep schedule. Tremo, Tremoctopus. Tremoctopus? Tremo? Okay. Well, I mean, they're playing some Souls games, so they're doing something right. Uh, going to the arcade with Nalus is always fun. He's really good at racing games and rhythm games, so we usually win a lot of prizes. Yo, bro's a god. What the hell? Scroll the next post. Oh, uh, that doesn't look so good. You read the caption. Another sea star was found dead this morning. That's not a sea star. Or is he holding one? Maybe this guy's actually alive. The 27-year-old sea star man was discovered with a deflated appearance and his left arm completely detached from his body. Oh, 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 why is he a sea star? He doesn't look like a sea. He doesn't look like Patrick. His skin was covered in white, oozing lesions, and his limbs had developed a slimy and goo-like quality, dude. Ew. This presentation of tissue, tissue decay and fragmentation is typical of sea stars wasting, wasting syndrome. As the outbreak becomes more pervasive, epidemi epidemiologists and other researchers work to... Checking your phone during work? How naughty. Wait, exactly. Excuse me? Startled by the sudden notification, you quickly lower your phone and see Nalus smiling at you. What is, what's up with his eyes? Oh, you surprised me, bro. You surprised me. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry. Nalus raises his hands in a meek act of surrender, but it doesn't feel genuine at all. He was just so focused, I couldn't help it. Did you see something interesting? Actually, it looks like this morning there was another body. Nalus' smile falters for just a moment. Ah, that. Yeah, I got sent out to take a look as part of the field epidemiology team. I don't know if I'm saying that word right. Epidemiology team? Whatever. It's all confidential as usual, so I can't tell you anything. Just know that everyone is working hard to find some answers. This is my golden retriever boy. Nalus speaks in a reassuring tone, then quickly returns to his usual carefree demeanor. But where's my where's my edgy emo boys? Anyways, enough of that enough about that. We're both off the clock now, right? So if we want. Maybe we can Nalus. Oh. Another epidemiol epidemiologist steps into the lobby after calling Nalus's name. Wait, am I just following everyone at work? This guy has goat eyes, right? That's what it is. It's goat eyes. <sighs> Can't tell if she didn't notice that Nalus was in the middle of talking or if she's just unapologetic wow. about interrupting him. She looks very irritated. That's strange. I've never seen Tremo in a bad mood like this before. Wonder what happened. I need to speak with to you. I need to speak to you about the body from this morning. Nalus pounced, looking back at you with an expression that resembles a kicked puppy. Oh, he wanted to hang out, bro. He wanted to hang out. He, he just wanted to, to game again. After his painfully pathetic glance, he sighs and turns back to Tremo. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Tremo turns her attention away from Nalus and onto you. Her expression softens. Have a good evening, clock. Get home safe, okay? Hey, yo, workplace crush. You're pretty sure you see her blush as she quickly turns and walks back the way she came. Now this looks back at you with a perplexed expression on his face. <laughs> He's jelly, dude. He's a little jelly. Oh, oh, what's going on? Oh, shit. Okay, I, I clicked off. Sorry, my bad. At least I wasn't the only one who thought that was odd. You shrug at Nalus. The censored image of the Bonnie I saw was pretty disturbing. I know Tremo deals with this stuff a lot, but the number of SSW's cases rising, I'm sure she's stressed. I'd probably have trouble keeping it all together and acting normal in her position, too. Oh, see you later, dude. By the time you're done sorting through your thoughts, Nalus has already turned around and began following Tremo. Who knows when they'll be done with whatever they're doing. I should get going. Damn. You clock out, then leave the building. You clock references? Anybody? Anybody? You, you notice that? <laughs> your apartment is nearby, so you can only take the subway when the weather is especially bad. The weather's fine today. You start walking home. Nice. Almost home. You walk up to your apartment building and put your code and open the door. And walk right into someone. Ugh. Whoa. Sorry about that. Is this my edgy emo boy? Ah, uh, no. It's it's fine. Um, you... you live here? Huh? Oh, yeah. You answered before really thinking about it. Should I have really answered that? Yeah, I'm using neighbor, right? Me too. Starting today, that is. I'm new to the area and just moved in. That makes us neighbors. Oh, he's got the eyes too. I guess it does make us neighbors. Right then. We should exchange numbers. It's important for neighbors to look after each other, right? I'm, I mean, okay, sure, homie. Uh, can I save? Can I can I save? Can I do a save? This seems like important. Do not exchange. We're gonna exchange phone numbers. I mean, what what's the harm, man? It's just a phone number. I can always block them. You know how hard it can be moving to a new area and not knowing anyone. Sure. You hand him your phone and he begins entering his information. What's your name? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Thamo. Nice to meet you. Like thaumaturgy? It's nice to meet you too. I'm Clock. Feel free to text me if you any, have any questions about the area. Clock. I will. Thank you. You nod. I should get going, but I'm sure I'll see you around. Oh, I'll walk you to your apartment. That's not necessary. You never know what could happen in staircases or hallways. What if you came across a large wasp? What would you do if I came across a... Would you shield me from the wasp? Are you... I don't think there's a wasp in the building. Um, I'd probably just start crying. But yeah, that's pretty much my actual response. I'd probably start crying, to be honest. Right. And I'd be a terrible neighbor if I let you cry after we met. Neighbors should look out for each other. It's safer together. 
What a gentleman, dude. And I can show you which door is mine, so if you ever need help, you'll know where I am. That seems like a lot to offer someone you just met. Sad face. I don't think so. <laughs> that's that's the end of that conversation. I don't think so. The Giga Chad responds. Okay, all right, bro, all right. You walk into the building with Thamo. Turns out that his door is just to the right of your door. Oh, sweet. Neighbor. He's actually my neighbor. Yeah. I'd like to toast to his blood. Toast his blood. What? Excuse me? How would you even do that? You... Chat? We just met the man. After showing each other where your doors are, you say goodnight and head into your apartment. You're supposed to do that weird shit after three months, okay? Once inside your apartment, you spend some time getting ready for bed. Alright, well, I have work tomorrow. I shouldn't stay up too late. Should I text Nalice before I sleep? Sure. Text best bro goodnight, I guess. Sure, yeah. Sorry for taking off without you, bro. <laughs> oh, sad crustacean? What is this? Ammonite? <laughs> what is this? A squid? <laughs> He's such a drama queen. You reply, are you okay? Yeah, let's let's be nice. Are you okay, bro? Are you okay, bro? Is this exploding? Is this a squid exploding? Don't send me that. But I love sending you that. Hey, you should get some sleep. See you tomorrow. You're right. Sleep well, Nellis. You too, buddy. Should I text Thomo before I sleep? Wait, why? I mean, I guess. I mean, just be like, hey. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess if we're interested in them, right, chat? Like, I mean, I mean, I guess text Thamo. These guys are grit maxing in my chat right now. They're stalking up so they can hit me with hydrates. YouTube, stop them. Hydrate for me, YouTube. This is Clock. Just messaging so you can save my number too. Oh, I never even messaged him. Okay, well that makes sense. Clock, hi. I smiley face. We're just gonna say smiley face. I'm glad you messaged me. Happy face again. Are you sleeping soon? With a wave. Sorry, I forgot the wave. I I don't know this one. I I I'm not cultured enough. I am. I have work early tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god, you have a job? Sleep well, clock. Hmm. Wonder if Thalma would appreciate a cat photo. Yo, always send a cat picture. <laughs> oh, uh... Oh, how cute. Wait. <laughs> what are these faces? You have to sleep. Sorry, Good night. This is literally me. This is me when I'm like... Someone's like, I have to go to sleep, and then and then I just continue talking. <laughs> Good night. You put your phone away and go to sleep. You wake up the next day and head to work after getting ready. Nice. What? Ex excuse me. Are you guys? Are you guys doing some weird planning in the in the chat right now for when to hydrate me? That's not cool. That's not fair. Let me in on the plans. Let me in on your plans, chat. What are you doing? Rate cats? Uh, they're all 10 out of 10. All cats are 10 out of 10. Instant. I love cats. You open the Coworker app to clock in. The app shows you who else is currently clocked in. Nellis almost always gets here before you, but it looks like he's late today. <laughs> There's a lot of saves already. Uh, I mean, we're going to tease him. For sure. I mean, teasing is just the best thing you can possibly do in the world. It just feels like you're all powerful. <laughs> Running lane? Who's the naughty one now? <laughs> Uh, okay, on the skateboard. All right. I'm on I'm on my way right now. Door opens, and as soon as you look up, you see Nala standing in front of you, holding a cup in each hand. I bet you regret teasing me now. I got you a drink. Baja Blast, you're... <laughs> oh my god. Chad, you got me Baja Blast. I'm gonna be blasted for work. That's, that's a true homeboy. Bro, bro broke into Taco Bell just to get me this Baja Blast before they opened for lunch, dude. Who's that Pokemon? It's Ammonite, dude. Marry him. 
This man, this man just broke into Taco Bell before lunch, before their lunch shift opened, terrorized some in, some opening employees, and grabbed two Baja Blasts and left. Ugh, what a perfect man. I bet you regret teasing me now. I got you a drink. Baja Blast, your favorite. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Now this holds you one of the cups, and you take a sip of your drink. Well, I should get back to the lab. Don't work too hard up here. Nalus gives a friendly wave, then heads deeper into the building. Dude, that's a broski. Oh, I forgot to ask Nalus about how talking with Tremo went last night. Nalus didn't mention it. Maybe it wasn't a big deal. Front door opens and Tremo walks in. As always, she's late and doesn't seem to even notice you as she walks towards the lab. Hey, Tremo. Gently call her name. She pauses, looking around, and finally notices you. Did everything go okay with Nalus last night? Tremo tilts her head in confusion and just stares at you. She looks like she has no idea what you're talking about. Last night, you asked Nalus to stay late with you after work to talk about the body from yesterday morning. Remember? Hmm. She makes a humming sound, holding the noise for several seconds, then shakes her head. Nope. Didn't see Nalus after work. I thought he went home with you. You frown, feeling confused. Tremo normally has a decent memory, even when she's tired. Excuse me? What? How did she forget? Another, without another word, Tremo turns and walks further, further into the building. I guess whatever happened last night will remain a mystery. Yo, hello, epic gamer. <laughs> you should get some actual work done now. Yeah, maybe, while well, sipping on my Baja Blast and a coffee mug. <laughs> After working for several hours, you yawn and stretch. It's almost time for my lunch break. I didn't pack a lunch this morning. I wonder where I should go. I'll check my phone first. You unlock your phone and see several new messages from Thamo. Before you can start reading them, you hear footsteps. You look up to see Nalus walking out of the lab. He nods in your direction, but doesn't say anything. He doesn't have any equipment with him. Is Nalus going to lunch too? Okay, well, let's let's save. I mean, I could I could check my messages, but like, come on. Come on. I mean, I got to talk to my homeboy. He's he's at the office, man. I got to talk to him. You put your phone down ignoring Thamo's texts. Hey Nalus, are you going for lunch? Yeah. Seems uncharacteristically distracted. Do you mind if I join you? Nellis frowns. He looks almost disappointed. <laughs> he quickly hides it. Oh, never, never mind. Never mind, Chad. I, I, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> my bad. I, I, what the fuck is wrong with me? I'm an introvert. Oh, ne never mind. Don't ask. Don't ask to have lunch with your coworkers. Okay, Chad. Don't do that. That's rude. That's fucked up. Quickly hides the expression, but it leaves you feeling confused. Did you want me to ignore him? Sure, I, I don't mind. I'm just going to grab some snacks from the vending machines. Okay. Strawberry potato chips? Excuse me? That's disgusting. Staff meeting. Can we bring snacks? <laughs> Wait, it's an Alice. <laughs> don't write on the notice posters. Okay, sorry. Can I bring a blanket? <gasps> I love my coworkers, bros. I love my... Both of them are perfect. You and Nalus head to the break room. He walks over to the vending machines. Something about his behavior feels foreign to you. He feels more withdrawn than usual. Hey, clock. You know... Nalus's words are cut off by your phone ringing. You pull your phone out. Nalus walks back to you and peeks over your shoulder at your phone, checking to see who's calling. Tremo. What does she want? I'm not sure. You accept the call, then hold your phone up to your ear. Where do we store the autopsy reports that we don't need anymore? Huh? Why do you need old autopsy reports? Don't know. Someone from BERE is here and asking about it. The Bureau of Ethical Research Enforcement? Hey, what? Why are they here? Tremo doesn't answer you, but you can vaguely make out a conversation that she's having with someone. Could be a problem. You're not really making my job here easy here. You can't hear the rest of what they're saying. It sounds like they're walking they've walked away from the phone. Feeling anxious, you turn back to Nalus. He's just staring at you. <laughs> He's just been waiting. Someone from BRE is here. BERE is here. Yeah, it took them long enough. You knew they were coming? Sure. You've seen the rumors about our lab performing unethical and inhumane experiments, right? BERE just wouldn't just ignore that. Rumors? No, I didn't know about that. Some of them are pretty funny. They've even blamed us for a couple people going missing. What, why? Nala shrugs. <laughs> okay. Alright, little, little evil, but okay. 
I'm just glad B.E.R.E. finally showed up to do their little investigation, so we can act all virtuous for them, then get back to business as usual. Business as usual? Oh, right. Sometimes I forget that we're supposed to keep you in the dark. You really don't know anything, do you? What? You just casually just say that? Bro? Why would you just casually say that? I guess I'll practice my performance before B.E.R.E. with you. Nalos, what... Are we... Are we... Is this company bad? What's wrong, Drink? That's mine. That's what I'm getting. The what's wrong. <laughs> I need my bottle to talk to me, okay? Nalus steps close to you, placing a hand on your shoulder. You've always felt comfortable and safe with Nalus, but the situation now makes you feel like your stomach is twisting into a knot. Don't worry about it, okay? We only perform perfectly ethical, legal, and humane research here. Smiley face. Nalus? Nalus? Is everything okay, Nalus? Why are you acting like this? Yeah, why Why are you acting like this, bro? <laughs> acting like what? If you really thought I valued ethics enough to let it slow down our research, then you're more naive than I thought. It's not just me, you know. Every single person working here is the same, except for you. You don't know what to say to that. What do you, what do you mean, bro? You trying to be rude? Just stare at your best friend, trying to process everything he said. Nalus sighs and takes a step back. Just make sure not to tell the B-E-R-E agents about this. They won't believe that every single employee was involved except for one who's entirely innocent and clueless. You'd be you'll be held accountable too if they find out. Are you being serious? Keep this conversation between us, okay? And even be or even better, pretend it didn't happen. How am I supposed to pretend this didn't happen with what you're implying? Pretend what didn't happen. Malice smiles innocently and walks back to the vending machines. Bro, you're just gonna hit me with that and be like, what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened, brother. <laughs> what? I'm gonna finish my lunch, but you might want to check up on Tremo. Feeling sick, but like there's nothing more you can do here. You turn and run out of the break room. Dude, I didn't even get anything to drink! Fuck. Wait, wait. I'm sure I have my trusty water bottle with me. You hurry back to the front desk, but you don't see anyone. Hello? Tremo? Hmm? Clock? You hear Tremo's voice from deeper in the lab, and a minute later she walks over to you. Tremo, what's going on? Is the B-E-R-E agent still here? They already left. Why were they here? Is the lab under investigation? It will be. It's not official yet. Tremo sounds completely unbothered. Are you not worried? This is a big deal, isn't it? Hmm. Tremo hesitates. Sounds like there's something she wants to tell you, but she decides against it. There's no need to worry. Someone else could could explain why better than me, but it'll be okay. What? No one ever tells me anything. Why? Why am I being kept in the dark? Tremo turns to leave, but pauses and focuses on you again. Don't worry, Clock. You're doing good. The city needs our lab, and our lab needs you. Everything will be fine. Tremo then turns and heads back to the lab without waiting for your response. Oh, that was a very PR-friendly message. Okay. Tremo isn't the type to say something like that unless she really means it, so it does make you feel a little better. Okay. okay. The feeling of unease doesn't leave you, though. Of course it doesn't. You sigh and sit down at your desk. Before you have any time to gather your thoughts, your phone buzzes with a new text notification. Huh? Dr. Willani added Thamo to the group. Wait a second, he's a co-worker now? Who's that? No one told me we had a new hire. Dr. Willani, not a new hire. Thamo is from the finance company that's funding a large portion of our research. Okay, why did you add them to our co-worker chat? Tremo left the... <laughs> she was not down with that. She... Dr. <laughs> added her back. Tremo, stay. <laughs> Sad face. Hello. As you may have heard, there have been some rumors regarding the research we're doing. The CEO of Orca Finance decided to send one of their employees over to monitor how we're using their support. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the warm welcome. Thomas' first day with us will be Monday next week. He will need to be aware of any changes to our schedule. Most of the work we do is confidential. He isn't going to be able to see much. I'm aware. Thalmo won't be given access to the lab. I'll have Thalmo follow Clock and he can explain how we're using Orca's financial support. 
Oh, okay. Who the fuck is John S John Sony, dude? And why does he have a spiked dildo as a fucking picture? What? What? Why? So Thalmo won't bother the rest of us? Okay. Tremo left the group. I'm looking forward to working with you, Clock. Smiley face. I didn't know that Thalmo works for Orca for Finance. I guess it would be working together soon. You put your phone down and decide to focus on working. You work, you work in uninterrupted. You work interrupted for a few hours, answering emails and managing work orders. Having fun up here? Nala sneaks up to your desk with his usual carefree smile. You're really not sure how to feel or act around Nalus after the conversation from earlier. Yeah, you were kind of a dick, bro. You gonna tell me now? Hey, are you okay? Nalus is really acting like nothing happened. If something is bothering you, you can tell me. You know I've always got your back, don't you? Before today, I trusted him. He was the person I was most likely to turn to when something was bothering me. Glock, talk to me. What's wrong? How am I supposed to feel? Yo, okay, I, I he's a homie? You give homies a chance, okay? I want him to explain himself. I don't understand you. During lunch, you said all that. Then you told me to pretend the conversation never happened. And now you're acting completely clueless and asking me to tell you what's wrong? Nalus frowns, looking confused. I didn't see you at lunch today. I didn't even have enough time to take a full lunch break. What? But... Nalus gently pats your head, trying to comfort you. Maybe you fell asleep without realizing it. It was just a realistic bad dream. I... I don't know. Did you... Did you drug my Baja Blast? Is he gaslighting me? Or did some... Did he drug my Baja Blast, bro? You can't drug the Baja Blast. That's sacred. You don't touch that. You don't mess with that, okay? Come on. What other explanation is there? <laughs> what? I don't know what made you th thought or I did or said, but the next time you dream about me, try to make Dream Nalice a bit nicer, okay? Okay. Good, good. Thank you. Nalice seems rather relieved now that you've calmed down. I really want to walk you home, but I need to head back to the lab. What do you mean you need to head back to the lab, bro? Nalice doesn't offer any more information. Was Nalus always this secretive about work? I can't tell if I never noticed before if I'm just being paranoid now. I'm just being paranoid now, I guess. You know, just... You know, I'm just normal like that, guys. I'm just a freak. You know, I'm just... I'm just weird like that. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. I always have my ringer on, you, on for you, so I'll come running even if I'm busy. Okay, thank you. Good luck with the rest of your shift. Nellis gives a restrained smile. You can tell he wants to say more. See you tomorrow, then. I want to trust you. He's sad. <laughs> Why is he so sad? Nellis waves and heads back towards the lab, looking over his shoulder at you one more time before disappearing. Oh, he looked back. Maybe maybe I should have asked him out anyways, Chant. You clock out, leaving the building and pausing confusion once you're outside. Thalmo is standing outside of your office. That's com That's concerning. I mean, I know you're working, but that's not till next week. Thamo? Oh, hey. Well, that cute face made up for it. Clock. Um, another save. Okay. Uh, ask if some ask if something is wrong. Is something wrong, bro? Something wrong? <gasps> you're concerned for me? Um, yes. Thamo tilts his head and stares at you with a large smile. That's so cute. So, um, is something wrong? I had to do something difficult today. It's hard to get my mind off of it. But I feel much better now that you're here. You do? I'm glad to hear that. Oh, right. What are you doing here? I wanted to find the lab so I know where it is. You saw the group chat, right? Yeah, I had no idea that you work for Orca Finance. Sorry that you'll be stuck with me at the front desk instead of being able to see inside the lab, though. <laughs> Don't be sorry. I'm happy about it. R really? You yawn. Today has been stressful. You were so tense earlier that you didn't even realize how tired you were. 
Now that you're feeling more relaxed, your exhaustion is catching up with you. It is getting a little late, isn't it? We should walk home. Together. Yeah. Thank you. Walk home with Thalmo, chatting the entire way. Just met him yesterday, but it feels like you've been friends for a long time. That's a good feeling. Clock, you need my blood. I don't have blood. I'm a clock, guys. I'm a clock. You're really not clicking with the clock, okay? Clocks don't have blood. Go stab your clock at home. You'll see. As the two of you reach your apartments, Thamo sighs. I wanted to spend more time with you. Maybe we should connect our bedrooms. Then we could easily spend more time together. Why don't I just move in? You can't be serious. There's no way that would be allowed. No? Ah. Oh. That we could connect our bathrooms instead. I don't want to see you taking a shit, bro. <laughs> That's even worse. Our apartments aren't that big, Clock. I'm going to start running out of rooms we can connect. <laughs> you playfully roll your eyes. We can't stand out here all night. Sleep well, okay, Thamo? Thamo hesitates, but eventually sighs in agreement. Okay, you sleep well too. You enter your apartment. Bunk bed. <laughs> Get bunk beds. What's the point of bunk beds if we're going to be in the same bed? Spend some time getting ready to sleep. After finishing your routine, you crawl into your bed. Decide to spend some time browsing Coral Connect before you sleep. The app opens up to a news, a news post. Oh, I remember hearing about this before. The post is about Orca, the CEO of Orca Finance. He lost his wife and kid a year ago in some accident. Wait. There's also a picture of Thamo here. Decide to read the text next to the photos. Oh my god, dude. Is he... Apparently after losing his family, Orca fell into a deep depression. That's when Thamo joined the company as an accountant, and the two became close friends. Orca views Thamo as a son at this point. That's sweet. It's a shame they couldn't get a photo of Thamo and Orca together, though. Decide to stop your scrolling early. You, you need a good re night of rest. Feel energized for tomorrow. Nice. Up. Uh. Up. Uh. Sorry. Okay. Connect your phone to its charger, then go to sleep. Nice. You wake up the next morning and head to work after getting ready. You clock in and get settled in your usual seat at the front desk. According to your coworker app, Nalice is already here. Your phone buzzes. You glance down at the screen. You have a notification from a new group chat with Tremo, Nalice, you, and Thamo. Nice. Hey, do you all want to go to the arcade this weekend? Sure. No, wait. Wait. With you? Yeah. When? I don't know. Maybe Saturday? I see. Clock, we should go to the... <laughs> Did this man just say that in the group chat? Holy moly. <laughs> Dude, he's ruthlessly risen me up right now. Clock, we should go to the arcade together on Sunday. Smiley face. What? No, we're supposed to go as a group of four. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Clock, you'll come with us on Saturday, won't you? Why would they... Oh. Nalice usually wants, only wants to go to the arcade with you. Tremo usually doesn't like hanging out with people outside of work. This behavior from both of them is unusual. But it was obvious from the group chat yesterday that neither of them are feeling enthusiastic about Thalmo visiting the lab next week. I'm sure they're both worried about Orca Finance retracting its support of our lab if Thalmo's visit doesn't go well. <laughs> then you'd think we would invite him. You're not sure what they plan to do at the arcade. Maybe they want to get on Thalmo's good side. Or maybe they just want to see what they're working with before Thamo shows up next week. Oh, but wait. Wait, guys. Do I go to the arcade with all of them? Or do I go with just him on Sunday? What do we do? <laughs> um... Hmm. I'll go to the arcade with them. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Sure. 
I'll join you Saturday. Okay. Me too. You can tell he was a little salty. You can tell he's a little salty. I'm not very good at games. Clock, you'll have to teach me. <laughs> we'll all teach you. Tremo and I are pretty good too. I'll be following Clock for work, so this is a good opportunity for us to practice working together. Oh, that's kind of cute. Right. Wouldn't your boss want you to spend time with the epidemiologist, though, too, though? My boss trusts me. He said I have full authority over how I do my work. Interesting. Put your phone away. Trips to the arcade area are always fun. But you have a feeling this trip might be more tense than you're used to. Yo, adult arcades are so much fucking fun, guys. Oh my god, dude. Uh, it's, just, it's just fun. It's just fun. You should get some work done now. If you're a gamer, I guess. If you're not a gamer, then yeah, it's not great. Are you guys bullying new people? Stop bullying new people, okay? You guys are nuts. They're a ghost. Leave them alone. A ghost doesn't have any of those things, chat. You work for several hours. The morning passes quickly and you manage to get a lot done. You log out of your work computer and are about to start considering your lunch options when the front door opens. We didn't have any scheduled visits today. Of course. Of course. Hey guys, I think, um... I think, uh... I think I might have I might have figured out who the Yandere is. You look up and see Thalmo standing in front of you. Thalmo, what are you doing here? Hmm? I should go where you go. It's not a problem. You're talking about how you're supposed to follow me for work? But you're not supposed to be here until next week, bro. That's fine. I don't mind. Oh, this guy. Um, have you checked with Dr. Willani and your boss to make sure showing up early is okay? That's not necessary. With the amount of financial support Orca Finance offers, Dr. Willani isn't in a position to complain. <laughs> He's just waving his big dick around, dude. And I don't need to check with my boss. He'll agree with whatever I decide. Your curiosity gets the best of you. I saw a news post about you and Orca last night. Sounds like you two are close. A news post? Oh, it must be around the anniversary of... Thalma doesn't finish his sentence, but you know what he's talking about. It's been a year since Orca's family died. That's right. We're close. Clock, are you worried? About Orca Finance retracting its financial support of the Willani Epidemiology Lab? <laughs> you didn't expect Thalma to just ask like that. Well, yeah, we get some funding from the government, but Orca Finance's support allows us to do so much more. Helps a lot. Orca will only retract his support if your lab is engaging in unethical research. No one at your lab would do anything like that, right? So there's no need to wor if no need for you to worry. Oh, I really hope that's true. Is it time for your lunch break now? Yeah, he's rich too, I guess, isn't he? You nod. We should eat lunch together. Sure, I brought my lunch today, so I'll probably just eat in our break room. Is that okay with you? Of course. Anything you choose is good with me. Are you always such a people pleaser? What? No, not at all. Think about how Thamo acts in the group chats with your coworkers. I guess not. I wonder how Thamo acts around Orca. Probably friendly. You lead Thamo back to the break room, and Alice is already there. <laughs> in instant. Clock? Who's that? This is Thamo. He decided to visit early. What? I didn't hear anything about this. Did he clear this with Dr. Willani? It's fine. Dr. Willani won't mind. Things feel a little tense between these two. I noticed it in the group chat, but it's even worse in person. Yeah, how he completely tried to blow him off, dude. <laughs> I love this guy. I love this guy so much. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask Nalus about his day. I mean, how you doing, dude? How's your day been so far, Nalus? Nalus' expression relaxes for a moment, but then he he then glances apprehensively at Thamo. It's been good. Just working on confidential things, as usual. <laughs> this is so awkward, dude. Did you bring a lunch, Thamo? Uh, no. I can just get something from the vending machines. You can get row flavor biscuits. Marsh- Sea grape flavor marshmallows. The cucumber chocolate. Okay, that doesn't sound that bad, actually. But strawberry potato chips? And and fish egg biscuits, bro? Oh. The vending machines are for coworkers only. They don't accept cash, so you have to use a badge. 
Damn. <laughs> I can get it for you. Or, uh, I can get it for you. What do you want? You sit down at a large table in the room while Nalus buys Thamo's lunch. I hope they start getting along. Otherwise, the arcade trip will be really painful this weekend. Thamo walks over to the table and sits next to you after picking out his lunch. I actually just got back from some field work. Picked up my lunch on the way back. Nalus approaches you from behind and leads over your shoulder, placing a cup in front of you. So I was able to pick up, up, pick up a Baja Blast for you. Another one, dude? Two in one week? That's too much sodi pop for me. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Focus on unpacking the lunch you brought. Oh, that sounded really flat. Ooh. Then you hear the sound of liquid spilling. Did he just spill my drink? You realize that the drink Nalus just placed in front of you is now on its side with its contents spilling on onto the table. <laughs> Wait a second. Ah, I apologize. My hand slipped. <laughs> Did you just... I'm really so sorry, Clock. It's alright, Thalmo. It was an accident. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second, chat. Wait a second. Is this man so petty that he just fucking knocked my Baja Blast over? He just fucking slapped the Baja Blast off the table? Wait a second, chat. You like men? Wait a second. Uh, no homo, though, right? <laughs> it's alright, Thamo. It was an accident. Thank you for understanding. Thamo? You two are both so kind. I'll keep that in mind when reporting back to Orca. Oh, yes, homo? Sweet, dude. Sweet. <laughs> I can never kiss that homie again, though. Oh, clock. Some of your lunch got wet. I can just... We can share mine. I think I accidentally selected more than I need anyways. Oh. Is Thamo provoking Nalus on purpose? He's pissed. It really seems like it, but I don't want to assume that if it's wrong. Wow, well, we're just going to say thanks, bro. We're just going to say thanks, Thamo. You're great. Thank you for offering. If you're sure you still have enough food, I'd be happy to share your lunch. Of course. Coworkers should look after each other. When did you two become co-workers? We'll be working together. Doesn't that make us co-workers? <laughs> look how sad. <laughs> hey, look how sad he looks, dude. What the hell? Why does he look so sad, dude? Tremo enters the break room, her eyes briefly glancing over the others before her gaze locks onto you. Clock, I need you. I lock you... Lock, you lock me, I a cage, a metal cage with rats. Rats make me crazy. I had a bit of a stroke reading that. Fadex, are you are you smelling burnt toast? Can you move both sides of your face? Maybe just call a doctor, okay? <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too, that the vending machine got more empty. He really did buy all those snacks. Good thing he didn't buy strawberry potato chips. Ugh. He's on his lunch break. Nalus and Thamo stare at each other. An awkward silence fills the break room before Tremo speaks again. Mm, okay, when you're done then. You finish your lunch quickly. You decide to go back to go help Tremo and leave Nalus and Thamo to finish their lunches together. Thamo isn't happy about being left behind, but Tremo probably wants to discuss something work-related. You find Tremo. Apparently she received an email meant for you and she didn't know what to do with it. You show her how to forward the email to you, but she doesn't seem interested in learning, because you're here. <laughs> nice. Ah, old people. Yes, I know this. Trouble. Uh, one time you made the mistake of asking Tremo what you'd do if you left. She just insisted that you shouldn't leave. <laughs> of course, Nalus overheard and backed her up on that. <laughs> so this time you just nod, agreeing that it's fine because you're here. You sigh and walk to the break room, finding it empty now. You then head back to your seat at the front desk. Surprisingly, you don't find Thama waiting for you. Your phone buzzes. Nalus kicked me out. <laughs> How heartless of him. Right? Achoo. Oh my gosh, Chad, sorry. <laughs> right? I should be there. With you. I mean, technically you shouldn't. Not until next week. But Clock... 
I can't even breathe when I think about all the finances you could be misusing right now. What? Is that a... P... I don't know this face at all. I... Oh, is this an old man? Is that a cane? Is that like a cane? Uh-huh. I'm joking. I know. I hope. <laughs> but I miss you. What? Excuse me? That's not a... That's not a joke. Oh, that's him. I have to get back to work. We'll have a chance to hang out at the, we at the arcade this weekend. Yippee! Yeah! Don't let Nalus kick me out. <laughs> Lol, I, I won't. Coworkers should look after each other, right? Clock. <laughs> Yippee! You understand me. Smiley face. This is the best you're gonna get out of me. I'll talk with you later. You tuck your phone away. You get back to work. At one point, you see Nalus and a couple of other field epidemiologists leave the building with some equipment, but the rest of the day is uneventful. As the time nears 5 p.m., you begin packing up your belongings and preparing to head home. Your phone buzzes, and you pull it out to check your messages. Hey, don't take your normal path home today. What? There's a body. What? Even if you're not susceptible to SSWS, I don't want you near it. Oh. Thank you for letting me know. I'll find a different path to take home. Good. Thank you. I gotta go. Call or text me if you need me. You put your phone away and sigh. Sea star wasting syndrome really has been claiming a lot of lives recently. Most people are weakly associated with their animal. This means that outside of some changes in their appearance, the association is inconsequential. At first, SSWS was only affecting sea star people with strong associations because their anatomy made them especially susceptible to it. So there's just sea star people in this world. But now the disease must have evolved. SSWS is affecting more and more people, even those with weak associations to sea stars. It's 5 p.m. now. You clock out, then leave the lab, avoiding your usual path home. They're hybrids. That's why they have the the cuttlefish eyes. That makes a lot of sense. That's that's the click. Okay, thank you for that. You wander around some unfamiliar streets. You're pretty sure you can get home this way, but you've never actually gone in this direction before. As you walk, you hear voices coming from an alley ahead of you. Starting to piss me off. Nalus, stop. Please, I'll do anything. You recognize the voices. That's Nalus and John Sony, a sea cucumber man. <laughs> That's also an epidemiologist at the lab. Are they fighting? Johnsoni sounds terrified. Cautiously, t cautiously take a few steps closer to the alley. Shut up. Please, please, I'll pretend this never happened. I won't tell anyone. J just stop. I, I can't ignore this. I need to see what's going on. You peek around the corner of the alley and your breath catches in your throat. Nalus is holding a knife that's partially lodged into John Sony's abdomen. There are several other cuts along his body, but none look especially deep. Excuse me? I didn't expect you to be like me, but I can tell. You haven't pushed your limits enough. I'll find a soft spot eventually. Bro? Bro? Nalus yanks on the knife, forcing it out of John Sony's abdomen. The movement is strange. It looked more like someone pulling a knife out of a rock than out of a soft flesh of a person. You don't understand what's going on, but you feel sick. It takes all of your strength to stop yourself from falling to your knees. Oh! Nalus raises the knife, then attempts to thrust it into John Sony's chest. The knife struggles to go through, facing some resistance and getting stuck. Your entire body feels frozen in place. I remember John Sony mentioning that he's strongly associated with his animal. A sea, sea cucumbers can harden their skin when threatened? John Sony must have that ability. Yo, that's kinda that's kinda badass. Never mind. I was making fun of sea cucumbers earlier. I mean, dude's literally a rock. He's the rock, bro. Stop! Nalus, I'm begging you. I, I'll do whatever you want. We've been co-workers for years, right? We're friendly, aren't we? Please, Nalus. I'm tired of your begging. Just shut up already. Nalus, please! I'm not Nalus. What? What? Before you even have a second to process Nalus's words, Nalus's body begins shifting. Colors ripple and move under his skin. Everything about it looks wrong. Nalus almost looks like he's growing taller. His hair length and color changes. After a few minutes, he no longer looks like Nalus. 
Now the person looks like Thamo. <gasps> who, who are you? The only thing you need to know is that I'm not Nalus, so there's no point in you begging like that. Oh my god. Dude, he... Dude, he's... He's... he's he, that's why Nalus was weird with us. Thamo yanks the knife out of John Sony, causing John Sony to wince in pain. Thamo raises the knife again. Why am I not doing anything? I need to do something, but I... Thamo plunges the knife into John Sony's throat. This time the knife slides into John Sony without much resistance. You don't want to think about the noises John Sony makes as he collapses. You try to block everything you're seeing and hearing out of your mind. Clock? Huh. Thamo is looking at you. Did you make some sort of noise just now? Did you scream? Did you cry? You don't know. You instinctively take a step back. Your legs feel so stiff and it's a struggle to keep your balance. Thalmo begins walking towards you. Your heart stops beating, starts beating faster and faster, but your legs won't cooperate. You're gonna fall like that, clock. Thalmo, <laughs> he's just fucking covered and wiping it on himself. Thalmo helps support your weight and with surprising gentleness leads you into the alley, carefully pushes you against the wall, allowing you to use the wall to keep your balance. Oh, how thoughtful as he's going to murder me. You try to avoid looking down at John Sony's body. Having the wall to support you is nice, but you're very well that this position leaves you with no escape route. Why? You can't make yourself finish the question. Your mouth feels so dry. He saw something that he wasn't supposed to see. Simple answer makes you feel like all the blood in your body is turned cold. Concerning? Like me. What? No. Clock, I'd never hurt you. I... Thalmo looks like he wants to say more, but for some reason he hesitates. You really don't remember me at all? Remember you? Your voice comes out sounding so small and fragile. Thalmo smiles in an almost bittersweet way. We both got lost in a huge mall when we were kids. We were locked in the mall after it closed and we found each other. Wait a second, what? No, no, no that didn't happen, dude. The cop- the cops found me, actually. They rang the buzzer, and I finally went to, like, the mall cops. We were scared, but we tried to stay brave together. We had fun exploring the mall and joking around. We were friends. Maybe it didn't mean a lot to you, but it was everything to me. I do remember that. It was an important part of my childhood, too. Why couldn't I remember it before? Why is my memory- uh, my memory of it- me Why was- why is my memory of it still fuzzy now? It's hard to focus with the way your heart is still pounding frantically in your chest. Yeah, there's a dead guy over there. I remember, but why? It was my salvation. It was the only part of my life that felt like it had any meaning to it. You have no idea how empty my life is without you. How suffocating that emptiness is. Okay, well, I mean, you need a hobby, bro. Maybe try games. You feel overwhelmed with too many thoughts and questions rushing through your head. Try your hardest to focus. I don't think Thalmo is making up his reason for doing this. I can't let this continue. What do you mean? Continue, bro. Let's, um, let's convince Thalmo. You only feel that way because we met when we were lost, alone, and scared. It was a source of comfort to you, and it's easy to cling to comfort. So it wouldn't have happened if we met someone at, somewhere else. You're attached to the feeling I remind you of, not to me. You just need another place to feel that feeling again. You don't need to do all of this. Thalmo does listen to your words, but doesn't look dissuaded or uncertain at all. You're wrong. I promise you. This would have happened no matter what. No matter when, or where, or how I met you. In any universe where my path crosses yours, this will happen. Thalmo pauses, a look of realization slowly forming on his face. If you need proof, you can take that feeling away from me. You think I'm only attached to the comfort you gave me? Thalmo leans closer to you, with the wall still pressing against your back. You can't pull back at, you can't back up at all. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh my god. Thalmo carefully grabs your hands and forcefully wraps them around the handle of the knife from earlier, with a sharp tip of the blade pointed at his chest. You try to retract your hands, but Thalmo keeps his hand, hands wrapped tightly around yours, trapping them in place. Then destroy that feeling. Replace it with pain. I'll prove it to you. I don't need that feeling. I need you. Hey, wait. Just calm down. I don't want to hurt you. I want you to. I'll happily, euphorically take anything from you, even if it's pain. You feel yourself trembling and starting to tear up. 
I don't know if I like this that much anymore. This is Hello concerning. There. Hello there. Hello there. Don't worry. You won't kill me. No matter where or how you stab me, you can't kill me. During all those years where I couldn't see you, I pushed my body far past its limits. To the point where I can do so much more than a mimic opti opti octopus should be able to do. Thalma pulls your hands and the knife closer to his chest. So even if you stab me somewhere vital, I won't die. I'll just force that organ to mimic a healthy one. What? You feel tears falling freely down your cheeks. <gasps> That's a little kinky, dude. I don't, I'm not into that kind of kink. Okay, I won't force you to hurt me. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Just like, you could probably use some time to think, right? Huh? Is he letting me go? There's no way, right? Thalmo frowns, almost as if he's reading your thoughts. Don't do anything foolish, Clock. I'd never hurt you, but I'm more than willing to hurt your friends. If you ask anyone for help, I'll kill them. You're aware now that I can change my appearance and voice, too. If you try to report me, I'll just disguise myself until I've killed everyone you reported me to. Oh, you're like a mass murderer, too. That's good. I mean, that's, that's pretty handsome of you. Your heart sinks as you realize how hopeless the situation is. Is there really nothing I can do? Is there not like a DNA test they can put on this guy? <laughs> you should go back to your apartment. I need to... You should go back to your apartment. I need to finish cleaning things here. Yeah. Most normal response. Sure. Okay. Bye. Have a good one, Thamo. As soon as you regain the ability to move your limbs, you begin running back to your apartment. Although you know Thamo's still in the alley, you feel watched the entire way. You feel an immense sense of relief once you finally get back inside your apartment and close the door, giving yourself some privacy. I really don't know what to do. You can't stop thinking about what happened in the alley. Wait. You should have remember more about first meeting Thamo when you were kids. Wasn't there another kid with us? We were a group of three. It's Nalus? It's totally Nalus, right? Ugh. <laughs> Dedication. Now that's an attractive personality trait. Your head starts throbbing. It almost feels like your brain is fighting you, desperately trying to stop you from remembering more. I'm chipped, bros. Elon Musk has got the brain chip inside of me. Oh god, why did I sign up for that? Why did he offer me $20? Can't remember much, but I think that other kid was important to me. I considered both him and Thalmo to be my friends. What happened to that other kid? Did Thalmo... Ah! Ah! Thinking about it makes you feel worse. You still can't remember much, and any conclusion you can come up with now is a negative one. I don't want to remember this. Not now. You've been through enough tonight. You allow your brain to block out the memories for now. To clock out the memories for now. <laughs> you decide to take a shower. If you think about this more tomorrow, you just want to wash your worries away and sleep. Your tense muscles relax under the warm water from the shower. After spending half an hour taking your time thoroughly washing yourself, you leave the shower. You dry off and complete your usual post-shower routine, then you change into some more comfortable pajamas. Right as you finish, you hear a noise coming from your bedroom. Oh god. He's breaking the wall. He's connecting the bedrooms. Please. I don't want to deal with anything else tonight. You walk out of your bathroom and see the silhouette of someone standing in your bedroom. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the person looks like Nalus. I know better by now. There's only one person who would break into my room like this. Really, Thamo? Are you serious? Can't help yourself. You're terrified, but also angry. Didn't Thamo let you go? Why is he back so soon? Thamo? Question mark? The fact that he's here disguised as Nalus is almost insulting. And why Why do you look like Nalus again? I know it's you. Nalus is my best friend. The fact that you look like him while trying to scare me, it's just cruel. That just makes it even better. He starts walking towards you. You look around, trying to find something to use as a weapon, but you're not fast enough. He corners you and pins you to the wall behind you. Oh. Oh. Aw. Uh. Chad, I don't know if this is uh, safe for work. Ah. Uh. The fact that I can wear the face of the person you trust most while doing this, it's exhilarating. Hey, chat. Hey, YouTube. If this gets really bad, you're not going to see the rest of this, okay? Um, and YouTube, if you do see the rest of this, I guess it's okay, but, um, I think this is a bad, I think this is gonna be bad, chat. Can't wrap your head around it. What's the point of showing up like this? Is it just to make you feel more helpless and hopeless? You feel stupid for feeling so relieved and relaxed during your shower. How could you drop your guard in that situation? 
Wish Nalus was here, the real Nalus. Hey, hey. Cups your cheeks and makes you face him. Don't zone out or look away. Feel yourself tearing up again. Oh, poor thing. Hasn't Nalus told you not to str trust strangers so easily? Maybe if you listened to Nalus, you wouldn't be in this situation. Something about this isn't right. You're acting different. You weren't like this in the alley. Wait, is it actually Nalus? Oh, are you trying to understand me? How cute. He smiles. There's no warmth to it. But you should worry more about yourself, Clock. While still cornering you, he reaches into his pocket, pulls, a s pulls out a small bottle with some liquid in it. He pops the lid off of the bottle with one hand. His movements are all slow and deliberate. He keeps intense eye contact with you the entire time. He tense up, but surprisingly he brings the bottle to his own lips and drinks whatever is inside of it. He suddenly drops the bottle and cups your cheeks again. Without giving you a second to protest or prepare, he presses his lips against yours. You feel liquid filling your mouth. Excuse me? What? No! I try to shove him off of you, but you're not strong enough. Why am I a wimpy boy? <laughs> he removes his lips from yours, but quickly covers your mouth with his hand. You desperately attempt to spit the strange fluid out, but the hand, his hand completely blocks you from succeeding. Non-consent is not poggers. True, chat. True. Ha! Huh, what's that? Are you seriously blushing? His tone is odd. You can't tell if he's pleased or annoyed. In a situation like this... I wonder, is it because I look like Nalus? Did you want Nalus to treat you this way, or...? He uses his other hand to pinch your nose, preventing you from being able to breathe. Your eyes look up into his in a panic. Just swallow and I'll let go of your nose. Don't worry, that drug isn't dangerous. It'll just put you to sleep for a bit. We'll start with, I, I guess this is a form of, con I guess I will consent to swallowing. You reluctantly swallow. He immediately removes his hands from your face. Good. Thank you. You don't move. You just fearfully wait to feel some reaction to the drug. You, you weren't lying, were you? Not about the drug being harmless. Barry starts to feel heavier, and you're hit with an overwhelming need to sleep. Sorry. What? I can't understand him. You feel weightless for a moment before something catches your body. Your consciousness fades. Thalma will probably come back to check on you soon. I'd rather not give him the chance to talk to you. Wait, it was Nalus? Wait, is that actually Nalus? Wait a second, what? Who is this? Is this a third character? Nalus lays your Nalus lays your limp and sleeping body onto your bed. He sits next to your bed, watching the peaceful rise and fall of your chest. This reminds me of the last time I was here like this. Now stares at it with a complicated expression. He reaches out to gently brush some of your hair from your face in an almost loving way. You know, Clock, throughout my entire life, I've never genuinely cared about anyone. I enjoyed the presence of others, but I enjoyed their destruction just as much. I loved living like that. It made me feel untouchable, invincible. I didn't need anyone. I didn't care if I lost anyone. I would always be having fun, no matter what happened to the people around me. But you ruined that. Uh, sorry? How? Now sighs, then brings one of his hands up to his cover his face. I can't get rid of the feelings I have for you. That much is clear to me now. So I might as well lean into these feelings, right? Especially since Thalmo's giving me such a unique opportunity. Now brushes his hair back, then smirks down at you as you sleep. I'm going to be greedy with you, Clock. I want your trust and friendship when you think I'm Nalus. I want your fear and hate when you think I'm Thalmo. All of your strongest emotions. I want them all directed at me. I'm going to force you to direct the full range of your heart at me. Keep sleeping peacefully, completely unaware of Nalus and his words. I wonder if you think I'm crazy for this. What if you try to understand me? You really should get going before Thalmo shows up. Wait a second, chat. <laughs> Nalus is just plain crazy, and he knows that Thalmo's a murderer crazy person. Wait a second. Nalus leans down and gently kisses your cheeks. He opens his mouth to speak again, but hesitates, deciding against it. Two boys. Two boys, one one guy. <laughs> Sleep well. I'll see you tomorrow. Two guys, one man. Ending three of four, your best friend is here for you. Chat, what the fuck is going on?
<laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second, chat. That was concerning. Um. 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 So, chat. I'm, uh... <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm gonna try to get these other endings, I'm gonna try to figure out what the hell is going on, chat. Uh, a little concerning. Thamo. Not the grape ending. We'll, uh, we'll start the game. I think, uh, we have to go cle clear from the start, though. So, I got lost in a large mall, yep, and we want this color, because I like it more. Yandere men love interest. I don't know what the difference is here, but I, I'm going to do that. I'm wondering if they have different characters is what it is. Let's skip. Okay. Check your phone. Then skip. Really, Nalus. Really, Nalus? Glared him, trying to make him feel at least a little guilty for startling you on purpose. Haha, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Doesn't feel genuine at all. Okay, that's the same. Okay. So, exchange numbers. I want to get him to murder me. That's what we're going to go for, chat. What happened? Everything happened. You missed so much lore, guys. You're going to have to watch the YouTube on this one because we're skipping now. We're skipping. Okay. Um, I don't think there would be a wasp in the building. Sure. I don't think there would be a wasp in the building. That isn't the pro the only problem. Our building is pretty secure, but there's one general code that all delivery services can use to get in. What if someone dangerous got into the building using that code? Well, that would be a problem. Neighbors should look out for each other. It's safer together. I can show you which door's mine. Okay, he said that, so let's skip. So texting him before bed? Yes. Such a drama queen. Are you okay? Okay, yes to texting Thamo. Yes. Send a cat, a cat picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, skip. Let's tease him. And then skip. But this time... This time, chat. Let's check... Thamo's messages. This is where we didn't, where we went wrong. You let, you let Nalus continue walking out of the building. Turn your attention to your phone. Good luck at work today. Thumbs up. I'm passing a cafe now. Philor, he's a pastries. Have you heard of it? I have. It's pretty close to where I work. Oh, you're here. Yippee. Are you on your lunch break now? I am, smiley face. Okay. Wanna eat together? Mmm. Uh-huh. Sure. Bit odd that he moaned, but okay. Philor He's a pastries is good. We can eat there if you're okay with that. Yes, of course. Okay. I'll start walking towards it now. Yippee. I'll see you there. Put your phone away and start walking towards Followeriza Pastries. Oh my god, I can't say that. That clo that moan was all you and not the game. I don't know about that, Mr. SCP Duck. I'm pretty sure that was like a mm -hmm sound. Like a mm -hmm text. Okay. You think I can't recognize when someone moans through text? You think a guy texting you with this many giant emoticons is not moaning while texting you? He's moaning while texting you. 100%. After being seated and ordering some food, the two of you talk while eating. Oh, hey, it's actually a different scene here. Nice. And there's a cat cafe nearby, too. There aren't as many food options, but the cats are cute. <sighs> uh, oh. Do you not like cats? Mm, it's the other way around. I like cats, but they don't like me. That's me holding back a moan? No, it's not. I love, I love cats, too. Actually, cats usually like me a lot. 
It's usually dogs that don't like me. Usually don't like I like dogs, but usually they they start pretty angry at me. <laughs> I have to make them love me. <laughs> the YouTuber viewers. <laughs> the cats at the cafe are pretty friendly. They like everyone. Thamo doesn't look convinced at all. Cats don't like me. I've tried carrying treats, covering myself in catnip, laying on the ground. How's that last one? <laughs> <laughs> How's the last one supposed to make a cat like you? I mean... <laughs> also, covering yourself in catnip. Alright, alright. So far, YouTube's good. YouTube's fine. Okay, guys. Pumpkin Kid sent... Pumpkin kin se King... I'm edging... I'm concerned. You're banned. <laughs> wow. Laying on the ground? To appear less threatening, maybe? He's pretty tall. I played a cat simulator to understand them better. I wrapped a rope around my legs and stood still to imitate a scratching post. You really are dedicated. Do other animals like you? No. Fish, reptiles, birds, dogs. None of them like me. That's so strange, dude. It might be because I'm so strongly associated with my animal. Animals can tell, I think. I did notice that Thamo's blush looks blue instead of red, but I wasn't sure if I should ask about it. Thelmo seems to notice your hesitation and smiles. I don't mind talking about it. I have copper-based blood instead of iron-based blood. I also have three hearts as well as some other things. Hey, yo, dude. Thelmo, what what do you mean by that? You got some tentacles down there? Chat, do not flick your cat's bollocks. Biggest mistake I've made. <laughs> Gabba, excuse me. Your doctor must really love you. When I was a kid, one doctor threatened to send me to a vet because she didn't want to deal with my anatomy. Haha, <laughs> no way, that's terrible. What the hell, man? It made you laugh now, so I'm actually glad it happened. That's not a good enough reason to be glad that something like that happened. Thumbo just smiles at you. Your phone suddenly rings. You glance down at it to see that Tremo is calling you. Wait a second, what? This is probably work-related, so I'll be back in a minute. Thelmo frowns, but nods in understanding. <laughs> He's upset. You step away from the table, walk to an isolated corner of the cafe, and answer the call. Where do we store the autopsy reports? Oh, this is the same. Okay, this is the same. Hey, what? Why are they here? Oh, he looked away. <laughs> uh, this is me. <laughs> this is me, IRL, dude. You leave me alone at a table. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is you'll you'll leave everything will be normal and when you come back something's wrong <laughs> Tremo doesn't answer you but you can vaguely make out a conversation that she's having with someone could be a problem you make it not really make my job easy here can't hear the rest of what they're saying it sounds like they're walked away from the phone hey wait Tremo <laughs> he's back to normal is Ginger here no she's not here right now you sigh and quickly walk back to the table. I need to get back to work. Something came up. Thelma looks concerned, but you quickly gather your belongings before you can ask any questions. I'll see you around. I'm really sorry for rushing off like this. Ah, oh, clock, wait, I'll walk you back. You rush out of the cafe without waiting for Thelma to finish speaking. Wait, did I just dine and dash? Did I just... Did I just dine and dash on, on that guy? Did I just leave him with the bill? Oh my god. You hurry back to the front desk, but you don't see anyone. Hello? Tremo? Nalus? Mm-hmm. Clock? Okay. Tremo, what's going on? Oh, they... Okay, this is the same. Let's skip. I know I'm not an epidemiologist, so there are some things they can't tell me. This affects me, too. I don't like being left in the dark Dark about this. Tremo turns to leave, but fo pauses and focuses on you again. You're doing good. Okay, everything will be fine. Okay, let's skip ahead. Hey, Nalus, did you have a good lunch? I didn't have enough time for lunch today. I only managed to get 10 minutes free, so just had a lollipop while checking the group chat. Congrats on becoming a babysitter, by the way. Oh, sorry. Wait, where were you going earlier, then, when you left the building at around noon? What? I didn't leave the lab today. Huh? You must be thinking of yesterday. Maybe you missed so much that your brain decided to imagine me walking around. No, I'm sure I really saw you today. Nala shrugs. 
Don't sweat it. People misremember things all the time. Hey, about that Thalmo person. Make sure you let me know if he ever bothers you or makes you feel uncomfortable, okay? Hopefully he won't give you any trouble, but you never know. You always worry too much, bro. I think I should be allowed to worry about my favorite co-worker. You smile, appreciating Nalus's concern. Even if it's not necessary, I love this guy. Oh, right. Did you hear that BRE is going to be investigating us? Nalus avoids eye contact with you. He doesn't seem surprised by the information, but instead surprised that you're aware of it. Uh, yeah, I guess you need to know about that. You guess? I'm an employee here too, Nalus. Even though I don't work in the lab, it's still important for me to be aware of things like this. Like, I'm not dating another guy. What? We're just talking with our broski, okay? Uh, I know, I know. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. For once, his backtracking sounds entirely genuine and sincere, without the slightest hint of him playing around. Wait, is Nalus... So it's very different. So, so who was Nalus last time? Because obviously he was someone else. Sure, as someone who works here, you should probably know about this. But you're not just any employee or co-worker. You're my friend. I don't want to worry you unnecessarily or burden you with things like that. I understand. I'm sorry for getting defensive. Don't be sorry. I get it. You don't want to be the only one that kept in the dark, right? Nalus pats your shoulder in a friendly and comforting way. I can tell you much about the BERE situation, which I know is frustrating, but I promise it's going to be fine. You nod, accepting that's the most you'll be able to learn for now. Well, I need to get back to the lab. It's been a busy week for us. It's almost time for you to clock out, right? Be safe on your walk home. Okay, good luck with the rest of your shift. Make sure you can get enough sleep when you're done. But if I don't get enough sleep, you might scold me, and I can't let myself miss out on that. You glare at him. Nalus. Perfect. Make sure to call my last name my name like that tomorrow morning when you're scolding me, okay? Okay, Nalus is a bit weird. Nalus is a bit strange, dude. Nalus hurries back to the lab, not giving you any more chances to argue. Really, that guy. You sigh and finish packing up your belongings. Clock out, leave the building. Thomas sitting right outside your office and he's soaking wet, chat. Looks completely lost. I feel bad for him, but he resembles an abandoned wet puppy you'd find in the rain. Thalmo, are you okay? Ah, clock. This is embarrassing. I... Thalmo sighs. Wanted to find the lab so I know where it was and it wouldn't be late. I found it, but... It started raining, and then my phone died. I couldn't remember how to get home. That's... <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. That's awful. I just... <laughs> Uh, no, don't apologize. Your laugh is adorable. I'm glad it made you laugh. I'll happily let you see my pathetic side if it will make you laugh like that. Ayo, dude? Ayo? Kiss, kiss me already, dude. Clock, are you also heading home now? I am. Do you need me to show you the way? Please, I might end up stranded here forever if you don't. Forever. That would be pretty terrible. It would. So please walk me home with please walk home with me. Sure. Alright, so we chat. Oh. That was a big skip, but that means that there was nothing new. Okay, uh I'll join them at the arcade. And then we'll skip. Okay, so we'll skip. You don't need to be worried. Orchid gave me okay. Neighbors should look after each other. Are you really saying you've already made up your mind? Is that really okay? You can't decide that just because we're neighbors. Why not? Um, well, it's fine, Clock. I seriously wonder about what type of relationship you and Orca have for, for him to be fine with you deciding like that. Thelma just smiles his usual innocent smile. Is it time for your lunch break now? Not. Oh my god, he is Orca! Wait a second, chat. He killed his family. <laughs> I'm, um... I'm just now connecting the dots, chat. Because remember the newspaper article? And how it said they didn't get a picture of them together? And they mysteriously, his wife and child died? And only he survived? Quotation marks? <sighs> Bro, really, uh... <laughs> I think you're slow. I'm not slow. <laughs> 
I just chat. You didn't even know. You didn't even call that out. Okay. You didn't even know. You didn't even know. You guys didn't even know. I don't want to hear it. You guys didn't even know. Okay. You didn't even know. You thought he was besties with his boss too. Okay. Shut the hell up chat. YouTube. YouTube. You agree with me right now. Or you're banned. We should have lunch together. Okay. That's this. Not the same. All right. I'm sorry about lunch yesterday. You never need to be sorry. Never. That's a pretty bold statement. I mean it. Well, I still feel bad for rushing off like that, even if we didn't have much of a choice. Don't feel bad. Just stay with me for lunch today. Or if you do need to rush off, take me with you. Synchronize the clock. He's clearly behind. I, I'm i reading chat sometimes, okay? It's hard. I can't do both at the same time, bros. I'll try, but no promises. I brought you my lunch today, so I'll probably just eat in our break room. Is that okay with you? Of course. Anything you choose is good with me. Okay, this is a skip. From what Thamo said, it sounds like Orca's the one eagerly agreeing to whatever Thamo wants. It really is strange to imagine the rich CEO of a great giant finance company acting that way. He's just a really cool guy. Okay. Let's not ask Nalus, because we want to be nice to him. Nalus might not want to talk about his day in front of Thamo. Did you bring lunch to Thamo? Uh, no. Okay, this is the same. Oh, okay. So, so we'll pick a drink for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, he knocked over the drink. Okay, okay. It's just... You two are both so kind. I really am lucky. It's just that kind people like you two wouldn't allow your lab to perform unethical experiments. Make sure to keep in mind how understanding you both are. Oh. <laughs> so my lunch got wet, bro. Okay, so last time we thanked him? I guess I want to be with him. But what would... What would the good ending with it? What have we done differently? Thank him. For now, let's just thank him. Okay, this still happens. So instead of question him, let's convince him? Whoa, let's save. Let's convince him. Is that what we picked last time? Yes, it is. Walk over it. See Thalmo in the process crawling through your bedroom window. Oh, it is different this time. There's no blood on him. At least he showered before breaking in here. <laughs> Wait, no, what? That's not something worth praising. He should have been covered in blood in the first place. And this is the fifth floor. You're so stunned that you just stand in silence as Thalmo finishes crawling through the window. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he locks the window behind him, then smiles sweetly at, at you as if he belongs here. This guy really doesn't have any shame at all. Somehow Thalmo doesn't feel threatened at all now. That makes you feel even worse. <laughs> wait a second, what? <laughs> what? Okay, wait, 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 this is save, this is save time. Okay, um... Try to sound annoyed. Oh, my favorite murderous stalker decided to visit me right after promising to give me some time to think? You try to make your words sound accusator accusatory and sarcastic, but your tone isn't as venomous as you intended. Visit? That's not right. I don't visit you. I return to you because you are my home. Okay, bro. Okay. Chat, what, what are you doing? What are you saying, chat? Chat, you need to calm down. Stab someone's neck? What what is happening, bros? Calm down. Gab? Gab. Don't even joke about that. Don't even joke about that. That's messed up. All of y'all. Y'all being weird. Weirder than normal, chat. Weirder than that time that someone was pretending to be my left nut, okay? That's how weird you guys are being. <laughs> Clock suits. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. What's going on, chat? What happened to chat these days? Huh? Yeah, someone in chat one time pretended to be my left nut. And then someone followed suit and was like, I'm Mr. Clockwork's right nut. That was a weird one, chat. That was a weird day. Are you still upset? You pout and cross your arms. 
<laughs> I'm upset. Somehow it almost feels like you're trying to convince yourself that's true. Thelma's expression relaxes slightly. I see. You, you wor you're worried he realized that you're not as upset as you should be. So why are you here? I thought we were gonna... Oh, hiccups. Yeah, they're there. They, they were real. <sighs> Sorry, Chad. I had to drink some water. So why are you here? I thought you were gonna give me some time to think. I gave you time. It wasn't even a full hour. Do you really think that would be enough time for me to process everything? I've already spent years away from you. I don't want to wait any longer. Cross your arms and stare at him incredulously. Can't you think with me here? <laughs> I really can't, bro. Hey, posture check? Hydrate? Alright, that's good. That's good to hydrate check. <laughs> uh, that's a good drink. Both stare at each other. Thalma's eyes hold so much affection and longing that it's overwhelming. I could bribe him. <laughs> bribe him. Oh, wait a second. I could bribe him. Let's bribe him, bros. Let's bribe him. I can bribe him into leaving or test Thalma to see if it's safe for me to let him stay. Let's bribe him. What am I bribing him with? My 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 cheeks? <laughs> I'll send you a nude later. Leave. If you leave now and give me some space for tonight, then I'll have lunch with you tomorrow. Oh, okay, that's much more PG. I was already planning on joining you for lunch. <laughs> I'll leave if you let me walk you to work tomorrow. If you let me start following you at work tomorrow, Dr. Willani won't mind. What about Orca? Orca won't mind either. Okay. I can't believe I'm casually negotiating with a man who killed my co-worker less than an hour ago. Is this the right thing to do? I can't tell myself that I'm just going along with it so he won't hurt anyone else, but... Fine. You really are needy. I mean, I... I mean, we're so concerned about the murderer. He said he wasn't going to murder me, so I mean, what's wrong? I know. Someone gently but firmly grabs your hand and pulls it towards his face. He softly kisses your wrist and looks back up at you with an expression of worship. And whenever you accept me, it just makes me even more needy. So what would you do if I rejected you? I would still become even more needy. Really? So in the end, there's no result other than you becoming more needy. Of course. He's so difficult to deal with. Okay, it's time for you to leave then. Don't look so heartbroken. I'll see you tomorrow. I, I can tell you're holding back a little and trying to behave for me. I appreciate it. Excuse me, man? No, he didn't replace the doctor, did he? No, no. I can do anything for you, even behaving. Thelma walks closer to you, gently brushes your hair out of the way, and softly kisses your forehead. I love you. Can't behave myself forever. Probably get more greedy tomorrow night, but I'll give you space for tonight. Thought you said you could do anything for me, even behaving. Don't be mean. I'm trying very hard. Bro? I know. Take some effort, but eventually you're able to get Thalma to leave. You're alone in your room again. Well, at least Nalus didn't break in and drug me. Maybe I should text Thalma, just to make sure you won't show up again. You start typing a message. If you show up in my room again tonight, I... I'll kick your ass. Yes, sir. Okay. Somehow you feel like you've just encouraged him. <laughs> Oh, no, he's into that. <laughs> you sigh and connect your phone to its charger. Seriously, what am I getting myself into? Yeah, uh, being uh, figuring out how to maintain a friendship or whatever you have going on with Thalma without letting anyone else get hurt. But all of that can wait for tomorrow. Ending 1 of 4. You'll see Thalma tomorrow. What if I... It was an eventful day for you. Getting lost in a huge mall, getting locked inside the mall, then finding two kids around your age in the same situation. There you spent the first couple hours trying to find an exit. After giving up on that, you began to s just explore the mall. It's kind of scary, especially when the lights went off. But you had your two new friends with you. It's well past midnight now. At first you were kept up by fear, then by the excitement of having friend fun with your new friends. The exhaustion had finally kept exhaustion had finally kept up caught up with you. You could feel eyelids becoming heavy and difficult to keep open. Don't touch him! Thumbo slaps the other boy's young boy's hand away. Boy groans in annoyance, star-shaped pupils rolling with his eyes. He's just trying to check if he's awake. I'll do it. Thalmo gently pats your cheek and watches your breathing. He's asleep. Wait a second. What's happening? 
Good. Thumbo, can I talk to you? I don't want to talk to you, but if it's about clock... Thumbo avoids looking at the boy, instead keeping his eyes focused solely on you and nods once. I guess... I need to show you something. The young sea star boy takes off one of his gloves and rolls up his sleeve. His hand looks almost deflated, and his skin is unnaturally shiny. It almost looks like... It almost looks goo-like. You know what this means, don't you? It means you're going to die. Thumbo tries to hide the excitement in his voice. What? If you die, then I can be alone with Clock. I can have all of his attention. But will that make Clock sad? No, it won't. I'll make sure of it. I'll make him happy. Wait, what is happening? What? What's going on? Is this the dream? Is this a dream or is this what happened when we were kids? Have you told anyone yet? Maybe they can treat it. They can't. I know already. Hey, Thamo. The young sea star boy looks to, turns to look at your sleeping body, his eyes holding emotions far too heavy for someone his age. I don't want to die alone. Ah, uh, he wants to take Clock with him. Then, if I kill him to protect Clock, it's not a bad thing, right? That gives me an excuse. Gives me permission. Doesn't it? Excuse me? Oh, and that's the ending. Okay. Uh, mm. Okay. All right, uh, let's load that back up. Let's let's load it back up. Let's test them. Consider your options. Do you want to do you want to do intimate things with me? <gasps> of course, of course. Thalmo answers as if it's the most obvious thing in the world. Oh God, I see. Then I'll consider letting you stay if you prove that you can control yourself. If you don't want to prove yourself, then you can leave. N no, please. I only let you stay if you prove that you can behave. I won't change my mind. I think this is the sex ending chat. <laughs> okay, I'll do anything. How can I prove myself? Sit on my bed. Thamo looks stunned, but he obediently walks over to your bed the second the words leave your lips. He hesitates for a second before sitting on your bed, acting as, he, as if he's doing something he shouldn't be doing. Thamo looks back at you expectantly, waiting for further instructions. Part of you can't believe you're really going through with this. You walk over and gently sit yourself down on Thalmo's lap, facing him. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Thalmo's eyes instantly widen and you hear his breath hitch. His entire face turns blue. You feel his body twitching on... What have I... What have I... What have I... What have I clicked? What have I done, chat? He seems completely bewildered by your actions, and so overwhelmed by excitement and a fear of scaring you off that he freezes. Give Thalmo a second to adjust. He just stares at you with a complex expression that looks like a mix of delight, shock, love, and worship. After a moment, he raises his trembling hands up towards you. Hands down. <laughs> Thalmo immediately re lowers his hands, but he looks rather heartbroken over the command. Do you forget why I'm doing this? I need to, I need to make sure you're capable of behaving yourself. You're being mean. I don't want to hear that from the man who killed my coworker earlier. Sad face. You gently shift your position on Thamo's lap, scooting closer. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you're provoking me, so, so it's difficult. Thamo's breathing becomes shallow, and it's clear from his expression that he's struggling. All you have to do is sit there. Shouldn't be that hard, especially not for someone who's an accountant and a murderer. You've done harder things in life. <laughs> but is he as hard as he's been right now, chat? I haven't. I really haven't. <laughs> He's bricked up. I find that incredibly difficult to believe. Excuse me. Sure, we'll just, um... Kiss him on the cheek, right? We'll, we'll kiss him on the cheek. I'm almost done. Keep behaving. You lean forward and gently kiss Thamo's cheek. Your heart beats faster in your chest, and you're surprised by your own boldness. Before you can even comprehend what's happened... Thalmos flips your positions. You look up in surprise. Thalmo is practically pinning you to the bed. Hey, hey you're supposed to behave. Uh, I, I can't. Behave, or I'm going to kick you out. You notice now that Thalmo's entire body seems to be trembling. He leans his head down, tucking into the crook of your neck. I, I can't, I can't, but okay, I will. Feel something cold and wet hit your shoulder. Uh, is he crying? No, that's his tentacle. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Thalmo stays frozen, trembling over you, with the occasional cold tear hitting your shoulder. You reach up and wrap your arms around him. You pull him closer and hug him. He stays frozen. Sorry, I was a little mean to you. You can tell that you're trying hard. As if finally being given permission to move, Thalmo quickly wraps his arms around you and hugs you, as if his life depends on it. The amount of desperation you feel in this hug is almost heartbreaking. Yeah, he slapped his tentacle on us. Stay like that for a while, rubbing soothing circles into his back as he clings to you. You only speak once again, you stop feeling new tears on your shoulder. Let's sit up, okay? Thalmo's grip on, your tight on you tightens for a moment, then you feel him reluctantly nod his head against your shoulder. You face him on the bed again. You can stay, but be on your best behavior, okay? Uh, of course, I promise. He's he's half octopus. Didn't you guys know mimic octop octopus? That's what he is. Thalmo reaches up and gently brushes your hair out of the way. You notice his hand is tr still trembling. He softly kisses your forehead. I love you. Let's get some sleep. Today's been an exhausting day. Of course. You should call in sick to work tomorrow. We can cuddle all day. You sure recovered fast. You already back to this type of behavior. <laughs> That's real, dude. That's real. <laughs> That's true love right there. When you when you tell your partner to just call in sick so you can just cuddle all day. Thalmo just smiles sweetly, looking almost proud of himself. Something about it makes you question if his pathetic display earlier was intentional. Confident that he wasn't faking it. You're pretty sure you can remember Thalmo being a crybaby when you were kids too, but... At the very least... You suspect Thamo knew what he was doing. He was intentionally making no effort to restrain his emotions in order to get your sympathy. Thought makes you pout. You know Thamo is observant enough to notice, but he decides to act oblivious and continues smiling in his usual sweet and innocent way. <laughs> Dude, that's me. That's me. Manipulation. <laughs> you really are difficult to deal with. Ah, oh, But you don't hate me, even when I'm troublesome and difficult. Okay, it's late. I'm sleeping now. Remember, guys and girls. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. Quickly hug one of your plushies to your chest and roll into bed, facing away from Thamo. What plushie? What plushie is it? Is it the Arcanine? Better be Arcanine. Seriously, what am I getting myself into? Still a lot you need to think about, like finding the truth between your childhood with, Tra with Thamo, figuring out how to maintain a f friendship or whatever you have going on with Thamo before anyone else is going to get hurt. All that can wait for tomorrow. Ending 2 of 4, you let Thamo stay. Okay, and then it's this. But I think this is the same. Yeah, this is the same. Yeah, okay. So that's the same, like, flashback. You have a fat bird plushie. Nice. Is it a chocobo? Because that's pretty amazing. Okay, I think we have one more ending. So we got two Thalmo endings. So I assume we need one more Nalus ending. Okay. Let's start that over again. Lost in them all. Sure. This. Uh, this. Sure. Boom. Oh, the phone. The phone. The phone. Check your phone. Okay, skip. Okay, I'm going to be skipping a lot here, so just give me a second. Exchange phone numbers. Yeah, sure. Sure, whatever, whatever. Let's um let's not text him. Not tonight. Should I, should I text Thamo? No. Just text no one. Let's be a dick. Not tonight. <laughs> Put your phone away and go to sleep. Okay. Okay. Uh. No. No. Shouldn't be mean. Hopefully he's sleeping in a little. He use some extra sleep. I'm just gonna say no to everything, chat. I'm just gonna say no to everything, actually. Door opens. Okay. Okay, got us a drink. Really appreciate it. Okay. He goes back to the lab. Okay. Okay, um. Talk to Nalus, yes. Let's talk to him. Okay, skip. Okay, why are you acting like this? Yes, I think I said that one though last time. I'll, I might have to reload, but okay. 
I don't want to talk to him. Can't take this anymore. I don't want to talk to you right now, Nalus. You know why. Stop acting like it didn't happen. Whoa, whoa, hey. Nalus defensively raises his hands. What are you talking about? He almost feels sick. Look, you know I'd never do anything to make you uncomfortable. I want to fix this, but you have to talk to me. Please, tell me what happened. Feel your eyes burn as you resist the urge to tear up. What the hell? You at lunch today. You want to me? Okay, this is the same. No? Why are you trying to pry it out of me now? I don't understand. Nalus frowns, looking troubled. I didn't see you at lunch today. I didn't even have enough time to take a full lunch break. What? But... Nalus gently pats your head, trying to comfort you. Maybe you fell asleep without realizing it. Okay, this is the same. Ask what he's doing here. What are you doing here? I wanted to find the lab so I know where it is. You saw the group chat, right? Okay, this is the same. Uh, I'm not going to the arcade with them. Sorry, I can't make it. Me neither. It's hard being so busy. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> Put your phone away. You should get some work done now. Okay. Well, That's a little different. Let's ask Nellis about his day. Let's... Yeah, sure. But I think we did that. Yeah, we did. Okay. Question him. Question him. Yeah, why'd you do that? Thelmo, are you... I don't mind sharing at all. Coworkers should look after each other. That's the same. Okay, Skimp. Oh, I miss you. That's not a joke. Sorry. Talk with you later. Took your phone away. Get back to work. Okay, this is the same. Oh. Okay, I think this one's important now. I think this one's actually important. Okay, so let's question him. We never questioned him. Why are you like this? <laughs> yeah, why are you a murderer, bro? People don't naturally end up this way. You must have gone through something terrible. Is that what you think? If you believe that I've been through something traumatic and terrible, will you accept and embrace me? Will you try to heal me? You're not sure how to answer that. As much as I enjoy your sympathy, I don't want you to downplay my feelings. This isn't the result of some trauma. This would have happened no matter what. No matter what my life was like, and no matter when and where. Okay, this is the same. He's... In any universe where my path crosses yours, this will happen. Then what if you never met me? I don't even want to consider a world that cruel. Some people would consider a world like that to be a lot less cruel than this one. Try your hardest to avoid looking down at John Sony's body as you say that. Well, John Sony wouldn't mind either, because he's dead. Thamo avoids looking at the corpse as well, but only out of disinterest. I wouldn't be so sure of that. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he didn't want to. He, he asked for this. What? Before meeting you, I knew something in my life was missing. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was you, but I did know I'd do anything to find and keep it. After meeting you, I had a goal. A direction to focus those emotions in. If I never met you, I'm sure I would have done a lot worse than killing a few people. Oh. A few people. He's killed others. You could probably use some time to think, right? Huh? He's letting me, Okay, he's letting me go. Skip ahead. Finishing up your nightly routine when you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror. For some reason, a self-deprecating laugh leaves your lips. What do you mean you'll put this off until tomorrow? Are you serious? You stare at your reflection, trying to remember if you were always such a coward. Maybe you should cut yourself some slack. You've been through a lot tonight. But you really can't push this off. One of your co-workers was murdered right in front of you. I need to do something. What should you do? Wait, wait, this is actually different. Okay, um... Call for help. You walk out of your bathroom and pick up your phone. If I ask anyone for help, I'll be risking their safety. Pace around with the phone in your hand. Their safety is at risk any either way. After all, John Sony. You can't change what's already happened. All you can do is try to prevent something like that from happening again. I won't let Thalmo get away with this. Oh, okay, cool. Wait. Dude, what? Why would I call anyone? Call the police, bro. Actually, maybe this is a bad idea. The fact that I called the police will stay in my call history. If Thalmo somehow sees my call history, I won't have a good excuse for why I called the police. I need to try something else. Oh my god. Well, call Nalus then. I'll call Nalus. If Thalmo ends up seeing my call history, I'll just say I was asking about something related to work. You call Nalus and your phone begins ringing. You wait anxiously for Nalus to pick up. Before you can react, a hand reaches out from behind you and grabs your phone. Another hand reaches out from behind you on your other side, this time wrapping around your waist. The hand pulls you back, holding you in place against the body behind you. A third hand reaches out from behind you, this time covering your mouth. Wait, what? Three hands? 
It's the tentacle, chat. It's the tentacle. It's the fucking tentacle. The hand tightly covering your mouth prevents you from being able to move your head and look forward, giving you no opportunity to find out what's going on. Hey, clock. What's up? Everything okay? You're Nellis's voice coming from your phone. He picked up, but you can't speak with your mouth covered. Huh? Nalus? I must have called you an accident. Sorry about that. I didn't even notice. The voice you hear from behind you sounds identical to your own voice. It's Thamo. No worries. What are you up to? Not much. I, I was just going about to go to sleep. I'm not feeling very well, to be honest. It's an uncomfortable feeling, listening to someone else pretend to be you and speak with your voice. You try to pry Thamo's hand off your mouth, but you don't have much luck. Not feeling well? Nalus sounds concerned, as you can hear some shuffling noises from his side of the phone. Want me to get you anything? I can stop by a drugstore on the way to your place. No, no, I'm fine. I already took some medication. I just need to rest now. You try to bite down on the hand covering your mouth. You hear your own voice making a pleasured moan behind you. Uh. Did Thamo seriously just in my voice while Nalus is listening? I just really need some rest. If you're sure, but I'm here for you if you need me, okay? I sleep with my ringer for you on. Really, I'm fine. I think I'll have to skip work tomorrow, though. I have a fever. Skipping work? What the hell, Mel? Why? What's Thalmo planning? You keep helplessly struggling, completely unable to shove Thalmo away from you. A fourth and fifth? Well, you're not even sure if these are hands, actually. Two more unknown limbs wrap around each of your wrists and hold them still. It's the fucking tentacle ending, bros. Oh god, I'm in a hentai. A fever? Are you sure you don't want me to come over? Jeez, you're always so overprotective. It's a low fever, and I'd rather not be disturbed or bothered while I have this headache. Yeah, alright, fine. I'll let the others know you won't be back, but won't be at work tomorrow. Get lots of rest, okay, clock? Yes, sir. Good night. Th Thamo hangs up the phone, and an uncomfortable silence fills the room. Why were you calling Nalus? I told you not to ask anyone for help. Thamo finally removes his hand from your mouth and turns you around to face him. One of Thamo's hands is still holding your phone. His other hand, the one he was using to cover your mouth, now rests on your shoulder. Then what? You look down and realize the thing holding your waist and the things wrapped around your wrists are not hands. They're arms, but not human ones. They're the types of arms you'd see on Mimic Octopus. Your eyes followed them, and you realize that they seem to be growing from out of Thamo's back. Excuse me? Yo, he's Doc Ock? Bro's Doc Ock? We're gonna smash Doc Ock? Um, keep struggling, wink. What the hell? Let me go! You look so upset, my love. You're not happy about the pet name, but it's far from your biggest concern right now. Of course I'm upset. Everything you've been doing is terrible. I've been bad. Thamo's tone is cheap, meek and gentle, but nothing about his expression is apologetic and remorseful. That's not an apology. I know. Then what's the point of admitting it? You're just fishing for attention. Thamo runs his hand from your shoulder down to one of your hands. Gently rubs circles into your palm. The motion might feel soothing if you weren't in this situation. You shouldn't blame me. Your attention makes me feel like life is worth living. Of course I'd fish for it. Just shut up. I'm gonna blame you. You struggle, but quickly realize there's no chance of you getting out of this through force alone. Despite knowing how hopeless it is, you keep desperately trying to pull your arms free. Thamo just watches you with a look of adoration as you slowly tire yourself out. You feel Thamo's inhuman appendages starting to move around, gently stroking you while still holding on to you. Can you stop that, bro? <clears throat> you know, octopuses have a cluster of nerve cells at the base of each of their arms. I don't need to know that. Those nerve clusters function as mini brains and control movement. Each arm can move independently because of it. So? So, this isn't my fault. Even if you tell me to stop, the mini brains are causing movement independently of me. That's just an excuse. Maybe. But even if you're right, you can't do anything about it. He just said, he just came up with the worst lie and then he was just like, yeah, you're right, but fuck off. <laughs> So what's your plan now? You stopped me from calling Nalus and decided I'd stay home from work tomorrow. Now what? Clock, I don't want to do things that you don't like. But being without you, it's torture. I can't do it anymore. I just can't. I need you. I'll take you back to my apartment so I can watch you. We'll figure things out from there. I think I can be pretty confident that he won't hurt me. It's not like I have any choice here. 
Might be given more opportunities to escape later if I cooperate for now. Um, okay, I think these don't really matter. Try anything inappropriate, I'll kick your ass. Please don't do anything scary. If you try anything inappropriate, I'll kick your ass, bro. Y you will? He sounds excited about it. Oh, God. Why did I? I forgot he was a masochist. Oh, why did I? I bit his hand and he moaned. Why did I forget? He wouldn't be able to stop me. But you're more than welcome to take out your frustrations on me. I'll happily and euphorically take anything from you. Anything. Even if it's pain. If anyone in Clonk's chat says, hear me out, you know you're about to hear something rancid. It, yeah, yeah. It's Daniel? Daniel is the most concerning individual I know in this chat. As long as you don't ignore me, I'll happily accept anything. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Let's go, Clock. I'm sure you're tired. I'll show you where everyone, everything is at my place. Then you can sleep. Fine. Feeling like you have no choice, you've reluctantly fallen Thamo out of your apartment. You figure out your plan of action tomorrow. Ending 4 of 4. Ending 4 of 4. Extra arms. A little bit of a voice crack at the end there, chat. Is that the same? This is the same. Yeah. Okay. That's all four endings. I'm not going to go through every single option. I just wanted to get all four endings. That's all. Um, that they had right now. Smash Cthulhu hentai ending? No, no. I told him I'd kick his ass if he did anything weird. <sighs> all right, Chad. Well, he's got hentai arms. This little... This, this this little yandere has uh, hentai arms. All right. I mean, I guess I'll choose him over Nalus. So this game is two yandere protagonists, right? Maybe antagonists. This game has two. This guy. This game has two choices, chat. Somebody, somebody, quote Daniel right now. Imperial brands, quote that right now. Quote that. Get him. Get him, chat. Get him. Here, I'll, I'll get him. I'll get him. I got him. I got him in the I got him, dudes, don't worry. Boom. Wishing he had hentai arms. You're already a cat boy, Daniel. What are you doing? <laughs> real? What do you mean real, dude? No, we don't want hentai arms. Nobody wants those. It's not good. It's fake news. Anyways, that was Symptoms of Deceit. You for YouTube, thanks for watching, guys. Uh hopefully you liked it. Um this is just a demo. Obviously, there's more days to come. Reminds me a lot of 14 Days with you. Um, we played that a while back. Reminds me a lot of that. Um, this one has two love interests. And I'm pretty sure the other one... Well, I think the other one does have two love interests, too, actually. But I don't know for sure. Because we didn't... There's only day three on that out. If you haven't checked out 14 Days with you, check out my playthrough. It's, it's fun. Pretty wacky, I think. Um... This one's pretty good, too. I like the art. I think he's uh, a cool guy. I like all the characters. Ren, the hot dog jump scare. Yeah, yeah. That one was also pretty good. That one also, I'm pretty sure, has two love interests as well, by the way. Um, that is, that one was scary. I was kind of worried this one would have another hot dog jump scare at, at a certain point. Another glizzy, you know. But it didn't. We're lucky. Lucky it didn't have any glizzies popping out. Just tentacles, boys. Just tentacles. And tentacles are YouTube friendly. The I show meat. Yeah, just just I show tentacles. That's it. That's all that's all that happened, boys. Just tentacles. Um, but anyways, if you liked the video, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Check out the visual novels playlist for more visual novels just like this one. And uh, subscribe, because we're going to keep playing it as uh, more episodes come out. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Peace out. See you next time. This has been Clock.